Hi, my name is Edwin Etehu from Technical University of Denmark. Today, I would like to share a study about hacking Blu-ray drives for high-throughput microscale 3D printing. What the heck? How we're hacking is like utilizing the components around you and used for different kind of applications. So why the heck? Imagine there's only one iPhone in the world and everything is uh, custom made for this phone, including LCD panel, CPU, and all the components inside. And I can imagine the price could be much more than nine high-end atomic force microscope, 4.5 million euro or even more. Luckily, iPhone is sold 2.2 billion units in the past decade. All the components, they have become much, much cheaper because mass produce one product, the unit cost will become much lower if we produce billions of them. How we're hacking also can save lives. The COVID-19 pandemic in last year, not so many ventilators using the screwdriver's mask, we can do something similar. Then we focus on micro nanoscale 3D printing techniques. Here is a plot, the resolution VS throughput. We have digital light process. This can achieve high throughput because it illuminates the photopolymer 2D pattern at the same time, layer by layer to print the microstructures. But it has its own limitation because the resolution is about 25 uh, micron. If you like to go lower, we have stereo lithography using laser lines or laser single point to, to draw an area and then form 3D structures in microscope. And if we like to go further, high resolution, two photon polymerization technique, use very tiny laser spot to cure the photopolymer. However, this high resolution technique has a really low throughput because if you like to print micro nano scale features in large area, it would take hours or days to complete. If we can have high throughput and high resolution technique, that would be really interesting. What limits throughput? Because those two techniques mostly rely on the raster scanning that limits the throughput of the printer. If you have a DVD drive, I guess you may use that for your cup or you can use a drive to make a good cup of tea. Actually, this kind of optical data storage system are quite advanced. Decades ago, they can read nanoscale uh, data pits in a very high throughput. For example, if we have one Blu-ray drive work at 10,000 uh, revolution per minute, it can achieve a linear velocity about 61.2 meters per second. Bear in mind is the laser can read a 300 nanometer pit on the disk at this velocity. Also, the disk is wobbling while, while spinning. Inside the drive, we have a crucial component called optical pickup unit. In short, we call it OPU. The OPU is cost only about five US dollar. The size of the OPU is around the key of your car. Inside the Blu-ray OPU, uh, we have uh, different kind of components. We have a laser and lens system, a voice coil actuator to actuate the aperture lens. Maintain the aperture lens uh, precisely focus on the disc while the disc is spinning and the wobbling. And also the laser light reflected back to a sensor for sensing the focusing condition on the disc. This is the closed loop feedback system. So we can read the optical disc in the high throughput reliably and stably. So we have a video here. We switch on the Blu-ray light by the custom made software. And we can also switch on the uh, DVD light and change the intensity. And we can also move the voice call motor up and down for this wobbling compensation. And uh, we can also move its uh, left and right. That's the, for the precise tracking mechanism to check the data on the disk. We had the preliminary test if a Blu-ray OPU can cure the photopolymer. We have a simple setup. We place a Blu-ray OPU underneath a cover glass and we place photopolymer on the cover glass. And the Blu-ray laser penetrate 
the glass and the focus inside the photopolymer and cure the photopolymer into a spot or lines. And this is the experimental setup. We have an OPU here and the photopolymer here. And we have an optical microscope on top. So we can see through the microscope, here's the blue ray laser focus inside the photopolymer. And this is one line cured by the blue ray laser. We have a small structure formed by uh, microscope lines. And underneath, here's a Danish coin. It's around 25 millimeter diameter. After the preliminary experiment, try to build a Blu-ray drive based high throughput 3D printer, or we call it Bright 3D. Firstly, we have a normal Blu-ray drive. We have spindle motor, and we have a OPU right here. And it's a reading disk. It's a standard Blu-ray RW disk. Then we try to spin code the photopolymer. So we put the, the drop of the photopolymer, and then we can spin code on the disk while by using the spindle motor to spin the disk. And with the different speed, we can have a different thickness of the photopolymer. Then we have a top OPU, it's another drive on top. This OPU is used for uh, cure the photopolymer on the disk. Of course, we have a control system to control these uh, two drives, and also uh, on the top drive, we have a Z-axis uh, a motor. Uh, we can use this motor to adjust the top OPU and the disk distance uh, precisely if we like to print higher structure. When we focus the laser on the spin coded photopolymer, and we can cure the polymer. And then we can wash out the residues of the, those polymer that not cured. Here is a photo. On the left-hand side, we can see the bottom drive here and top drive here. And the bottom OPU is underneath the disk, and the top OPU is driven by the slip motor. And these two slip motor, they are the same, and they uh, can move uh, simultaneously. The top part is uh, guided uh, by the four linear uh, slides. And then we assemble together and see the linear slides uh, ensure the linear movement of the top drive so it can move up and down. And also we have a container here. While the, we are spinning the photopolymer, the residue of polymer will be contained inside the container. So not to spill out uh, everywhere in the lab. We have three commercial photopolymers used in this experiment. We have uh, foam black, black and foam black white, and also in Vision Tech photopolymer. This is a spin coding uh, on the disk process, different from normal spin coder. Uh, inside the drive, we have um, a magnetic clamp to clamp the disk on the motor. So we need to deposit the photopolymer donut shape surrounding the magnetic clamp. And later, we spin the disk in the higher speed and then we can have a very thin layer of the photopolymer on the disk. So here's a video shows uh, the process. And to uh, characterize the spin coded photopolymer, we use a one drop and uh, to spin the disk and we measure the coded layer thickness. So one disk, we can do several different speed and the thickness uh, experiments. The coated photopolymer is evaluated by wireless interferometer. And then we can have uh, this uh, plot. So here is uh, spinning speed. And uh, this is uh, here is the thickness of the polymer. As you can see, the two photopolymer from foam labs is quite thick, even we spin to uh, 6,000 RPM. The polymer from Evision Tech has a thinner layer, so it can achieve one point, around 1.5 micron thickness at the 6,000 RPM. And then we try to 3D print the layer on the disk. So this is a video shows uh, 
how we uh, compensate the, this wobbling uh, through the lower or the bottom OPU. So because the wobbling signal is uh, uh, transferred to the top OPU and to drive the VCM. So we can maintain the laser focus on the disk. This is the first uh, spin printing result image by optical microscope. Here is a scale bar 100 micron. And we can see we can print around 10 to 15 micron widths uh, lines or dots on the disk. And the spin printing on the disk, we also use a different uh, frequency to switch on and off the top uh, OPU laser. The 10 kilohertz, we can see the longer line. And the 100 kilohertz, we can see the shorter dots. When the frequency go higher, the feature goes smaller. All the skill bars, they are 100 micron. And we also use SEM to image the printed feature. Uh, we print continuous line structure to evaluate if the top OPU laser is uh, focusing on the disk properly. So as you can see from the overview and to zoom in, uh, we can see the lines, they are stay on the disk uh, substrate surface. We also image the different laser switching frequency of the top OPU. This is the 10 kilohertz frequency, and this is the 100 uh, kilohertz. And here we have a 300 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. So we can see the uh, round shaped dots, and the diameter is around uh, five point, uh, around six micron. So we also try to print two layers uh, photopolymer on the disk. So here we can see uh, a band structure for the first layer. And the second layer, we are printing the small dots on top. Uh, we also have this kind of structure because uh, we modulate the top OPU laser with a sine uh, wave. And then we print uh, three bands structure. And this is uh, the bottom one. We, we don't print anything on top. And the middle one, we print 100 kilohertz dots on top. And on the top one, we, on, we also print different size dots on top. Then we also print a large area or the continuous uh, uh, substrate on the disk. Uh, this is overview here. And when we zoom in, we can see the first spin coded layer we print. So the first layer is kind of peeled off while we try to wash the residue. And we can see the substrate surface here. And we can see the difference of the substrate surface and the first layer printed on the disk. The second layer we print with uh, around 300 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. So we can see a lot of small cone shape uh, structure. Then we conclude this study. Firstly, we can do on disk uh, spin coding and we can code different kinds of sickness. The secondly, we can compensate the disk wobbling while printing. And then we can cure micro features on a faster spinning disk. And we can print two layers on the disk and the two layers can form large amount of microscale structures. I believe with the further development, we can achieve a multi-layer 3D printing on disk and also closed loop microscale 3D printing. That's a pinpoint 3D printing on the disk because if we like to form specific uh, structure, then we need to know where we switch on laser, where we switch off. I would like to thank uh, very smart students and the collaborators and also the funding agency and our group leader. 
if you'd like to know more about CD, DVD, Blu-ray, OPU hacking or different kind of research, you can check out the, this YouTube video and uh, you can scan this uh, QR code for more information. Thank you.